Welcome to the introduction for lab four. In lab four, we're going to look at how to solve algebraic equations, how to find the intersection of two functions, and how to make a table of values for a function. These are things we'll need later on in our course. All right, so first, how to solve algebraic equations and get both the exact value and the numerical values. So I have a sample set up here already, and you'll notice I have typed in the following command. As always, you're going to find the syntax for this command as part of the lab instructions. To solve an equation for a variable, you use the solve command. In the first spot, you write the entire equation. But please notice that you have this double equal sign in place of the single equal sign, another bit of syntax in Mathematica. After that, you put a comma and you indicate which variable it is that you're looking to solve for. So in this case, we're solving for x. When I do a shift enter, you can see I've got my results here. What this is saying is that there are three values of x that make this particular equation true, which are 1, 2, and 3. We do have an additional option here, which is we can go back to the original command and add double slash grid. You can see the difference in the outputs. In this case, they're listed vertically. In this case, they're listed horizontally. Okay, let's look at this next example. Here we're solving a quadratic equation. I use my solve command, double equal sign in place of the single equal sign, and the variable to solve for is x. And in this case, please notice the outputs. You have this I that appears. Hopefully you have studied complex numbers before. This is an imaginary root um, as opposed to being a real root. And Mathematica is capable of finding both real and imaginary roots. So this is a perfectly legitimate answer. And notice the difference if I ask for the grid view. The last option that you can use with the solve command is if you put the capital N in front of solve. As you've seen in the previous labs, when you see a capital N, it means it's going to give a numerical value output. Mathematica's default is to give you the exact value. When I switch it to numerical, you can see how my exact values have now been converted to decimals. So that's how you use the nsolve command. Next up, how to find the intersection point of two functions. Or another way to say the same thing is how to find where two functions are equal. So in this sample, we're looking to find all the values such that f of x will equal g of x. I've chosen the function f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus 1. You're asked to begin by plotting the function on a graph that starts at negative 3 and ends at positive 3. Set the origin to 0, 0, label the axes x and y. There is a reason why it is recommended that you always graph your function. And that's because there can be multiple intersection points and you need to have a rough idea of where they would be. I've set up some of the basic commands. You're going to store your function f. You're going to store your function g. We're going to go back to the plot command to make the graph. When you're graphing more than one function, you need to put them inside of set brackets. The next command specifies the domain, the parts of these functions that I want to see. Then the axes origin command is going to have my axes intersect at 0, 0. Axes label tells it to label the axes x and y. I'm going to go ahead and hit shift enter. And we have a very pretty looking graph. And you can see here that there are two intersection points. One is over here in the negative x values. One is over here in the positive x values. So we're going to use the find root command to locate where f of x equals g of x. Now, just like with the solve command, notice it's a double equal sign in between those function names. And because there's multiple intersection points, you need to let Mathematica know which one you're interested in finding. Inside a curly set bracket, you're going to put x because that's the variable that we're solving for. And you're going to give an estimate of where to look for one of the roots. So if I look at the negative root, the one on the negative part of the x-axis, it looks to me like it's somewhere around negative 0.6. I'm going to close that, close my square bracket, of course, shift enter. 
And you can see it found that exact value of this root, which is negative 0.62 approximately. I can take that find root command again, copy and paste it into a new spot. And the positive root looks like maybe 1.6 to me. So that's going to be the estimate I use. And I get the positive root. Now your estimate does not have to be particularly close. I mean, I can say two and it's still going to locate it. So you don't have to be super accurate when you're giving it the value to search near. The next sample we're going to do is to create a two column table of values for f of x equals square root of x plus 4 in increments of 0.25 starting at x equals negative 4 and ending with x equals 5. And then we're given some table headings to use. Mathematica has a built in table command. Inside the table command, you list what columns you want to be in your table. So since we have multiple here, we want a two column table. I have set brackets and inside of those set brackets, I put X as my first column, comma, square root of X plus four as my second column. So I have my inputs and my outputs in other words. Next, I put a comma and the other information I need to provide is what X values I wanna use as inputs. So inside of set of set brackets, I put the variable X from negative four to five. And in the last spot, I always put the increment. The increment is what the X values in the table will increase by. So by setting it to 0.25, my table is gonna start at X equals negative four, then go to X equals negative 3.75, then X equals negative 3.5 and so forth. Now I'm not gonna worry about the table headings just yet. Let's just see what the basic table command does. All right, I have inputs and outputs, but this does not look like a table. There's actually an additional command you need to use right in the very beginning, which is the table form command, which literally stands for format as a table. You put that command in front, open the square bracket, close it at the other side, and now we're getting something that looks like a two column table. So this is better. The way that you make the table headings show up is you put it after your table command. We have this set of square brackets here. So I am going to go right after the square bracket for the table command, put a comma, ask for the table headings command, which is again gonna take an arrow, as you've seen with other commands. All right, to use the table headings command, you're gonna open up a set bracket and immediately do a set of empty set brackets. And I'll show you why in a moment, comma. Now you're going to open another set bracket and in quotes, put what you want your column headings to be. So X is my inputs, that's going to be first. And then my next heading is for the square root of X plus four. Make sure you close the quotes outside the square root, close and close your set brackets. When I press shift enter, I've got a nice looking table. It's now got headings at the top. And those headings can be the functions. You can type words in here. Um, Mathematica does not actually care what it is that appears at the top. All right, now what happens if we take away that empty set of braces at the start? When I press shift enter now, you can see that now all of a sudden my nice table setup disappears, all right? So that's why you need that first set of empty braces inside your function. All right, there's one last thing we need to cover, and that's this sample. We're doing a two column table of values. We're using the same function, but instead of having Mathematica just automatically count off the table values in increments from one X value to another, I have the option of specifying the exact X values I wanna look at. 
we have a list of three different x values I'd like to see in my table. I'm going to paste in my command from before, and now I just need to edit it. I need to go to this set of parentheses where I used an increment to generate table values, wipe out everything after the x, and I'm now going to use curly set brackets, and inside of those brackets, list the table values I want to focus on. Make sure you then close the set bracket for that list. I'm going to go and put my table headings back to what they were originally. And when I press shift enter, you can see now my table is much smaller and only includes the values in the list. So you have two options for creating your X values.